starter on skates. This is my fifth hit. Just as I suspected, those uh, roller skate wheels, roller blade wheels I used were just a bit too soft. And you can probably see they, uh, they got chewed up. So that was about a year ago now. Uh, that's how well it went. <laughs> got sick of it, put it on the shelf and it's still up here. So today I'm going to be working on these motorized roller skates. Um, I've, got a good I've got an idea of how I can make it work. So... I'll show you what it's sort of made of. So the parts I've got here is a backpack motor. This is an old, not sure, something rather, a uh, little two-stroke. It was originally a shearing, like a mobile shearing plant, which would have your flexi cable through your shearing jujus on it. Uh, and then these skates, uh, radio flyer, flyer skates that I've kind of expanded and stuff, put some wings on it so I can get my shoes into it. I've got some drive cables here, which are weed eater or line trimmer lines. And they're connected with a little 90 degree or 80 degree, no, 90, 100, 100 degree. Um, that's your hex drive. Your, is it quarter? No, it's not a quarter inch. A little hex drive for your drill and stuff, your angly thing. Um, and to go from the motor to the flex drives I had this sort of made up this is <laughs> one of the last iterations I had didn't work or I didn't try it one or the other anyway I've I think I'm going to stick with this idea to a certain extent but run two separate belts off it um, all right so uh, <laughs> enough of that let's get into it so on further inspection, uh, I have now come to the conclusion that this uh, design prototype was actually never run. I think I just got sick of the jankiness of it. Um, so yeah, you can see it's, I've chopped and changed and screwed and added bits just as proof of concept, see if it'll work. But I, by the looks of it, I've never actually tested it. Uh, how this works is you've got your centrifugal clutch in the motor, so that spins, spins this wheel, three to one reduction and then the skates with that little flexi drive pops into there spin spin skate skate uh, yeah so it looks to be like it should work but it needs yeah it needs a uh, better go of it this is a ladder belt here now this idler pulley or belt tensioner should really be on the other side because this spins that direction and you kind of want it to be pulling straight off a pulley um, but it's going to be pulling off here anyway uh, the reason for this little zigzag part is to get as much bite onto this little drive pulley that's um, that's going to be in here because it's so small you need to get more bite onto it um, and it might just go slightly larger idler wheel there but first thing I'm going to get a plate to um, replace that cardboard this is my scrap pile here I'll just grab that looks all right use some of that um, that can be my new sort of bottom plate and it's going to sit up here somewhere so then I just have to extend that drive spindle up okay so I'll say it's a good improve uh, <laughs> a little improvement um, it's actually a big improvement but it's still far from ideal but I think it's going to be good enough so take a look at this and here it is in all its glory <laughs> it's slightly better uh, I'll see if I can get this together so these are the bearing supports which fit the wooden things so that's one the second one that goes there somewhere oh that's a bit wobbly yeah it still needs a top plate on that um, that there in there and I've got a little bit of play out of this idler or whatever but I'm thinking that I may need to get some sort of uh, locking what do you call it like a locking thing on the tensioner Let's see if I can do this one handed eh one handed around there 
Feed that on to, look at that. How's that for professional? <laughs> so that's, uh, I think that'll do the job. There's a wee bit of bending going in there, but just a top plate on there, and then I can use that to keep all these captive. Uh, these will have another bearing, and then these little pins go off to the uh, the skates. And there's a little shaft here I need to extend, but that's actually, I'm quite happy with that. So I've got this top plate on it now, and uh, everything's pretty well, well, still quite a bit of play in it. Uh, I think that's better than having it too tight though. Um, and even without uh, guides and stuff, that bearing seems to be um, running, you know, the belt's running across it alright. I don't think it's going to move much, so I'll just leave it as is. Um, I'm going to go and put the drill on this and we'll see how it goes at speed. So this drill is rated for uh, 2000 RPM, so it's going to be, what's that, quarter, it's about a third to a quarter of the actual um, speed. I reckon that little, well, how fast is that little backpack thing going to go? Probably only 5,000 RPM, eh? so it's about half, half speed. So it seems to be cracking alright. That one there is a wee bit wobbly, but I think it'll be okay because it's all flexi drive shaft anyway, so I think we'll be fine with that. I figured out a better way of attaching these. Um, before, I had them running through a pipe, but when you'd feed them in, you couldn't actually see where the connection was, where that's going to connect in. So I made them open now, you can see it looks a lot, well, yeah, okay, it looks better, we'll say that. Uh, works good, and I've also welded the uh, two plates together. I was going to bolt it, but yeah, good enough for now, so if I need to get into it, I can always um, cut it open later. Next step is to bolt this onto the bot well, yeah, bottom of the backpack, and then uh, connect the nut end uh, up to this somehow. So what I've done here was that's a little D, do you call that a D? That, you know, it's got the little flat spot, so I welded a bit of a washer and ground it down to look like a D. So that fits over there, so I'll utilise that. Um, and because these should be a consistent spacing, I can just use a solid bar. Um, yeah, I could probably weld to that actually. Maybe just weld an old socket or something. Last steps all together. I've uh, ground that down to a hex of some sort so I can fit this socket on that's been cut short. There's a bolt in there. And then I've jammed another 30 mil socket on that end to fit with that bolt that is welded, or the nut that's welded onto that drive shaft. So when you turn that, that all turns. And then I've just got these uh, brackets to go in the middle there, weld all together, and it's ready for a skate. Oh well, we take a look at this, it's all together, and I'm fairly confident in that, well, I was confident in the last style, uh, last design as well, but I'm fairly, fairly confident with this one. Uh, I managed to get that spindle there um, quite s true. I put it in the lathe and gave it a tap with a hammer after welding it, so still a bit of a play in there just in case it needs to. Uh, the only reason why this is so long is because these here are too short. <laughs> so I <laughs> had to make up the extra length on this, but it actually fits all right because the backpack goes right down to the, the bottom there, uh, the cutout backpack bit. All right, um, I've cleaned up the floor of all uh, obstacles and I uh, gave it a sweep so there's no rocks to trip on. Uh, so one thing left to do, <laughs> go for a skate. <laughs> so the way I'm going to do this is I'm not going to um, waste my luck in testing to see if this whole system works. I'm just going to go for it. Uh, if it fails, it's going to fail while I'm using it. So I've tipped that up because the fuel's leaking, but I'll get that back. Skate's on. Uh, then I'll get my gloves on too. Um, yeah, I'd like to wear gloves. I think it's probably my bum I'm going to fall on. But we'll see. Is that the right foot? Uh, uh, yes. Right, I think I've done that right, haven't I? It's a bit cumbersome. These here look a little long now, but 
when you bend over, yeah, they get pretty tight. All right, see if it actually runs. A bit of throttle, but I can't reach it from where I am. Bit of choke. It works. These are my motorized roller skates, and this is my second test. Whoa. Oh, jeez. Oh, shit. <laughs> Oh god! Oh. Well, that was underwhelming. Oh, I know what I need. Here we go. There's my training wheels. That definitely works, but... Gonna take a bit to get up to speed. I think I could have done with uh, a slower gearing. I can smell burning rubber too. Yeah, um, yeah maybe I need to take it outside for uh, a bit longer of a run. But uh, and I'll tighten the belt up. I think we've got a bit of slip going on. But uh, I'll see how it's holding up. Yeah, not too bad. It's all still together. All right. Hang on, give me a minute. I'll get out of this and we'll debrief. Right, so I've had a bit of a think about it, a debrief on my own, and it looks like uh, this system isn't going to work. Uh, who would have guessed? But uh, this part, good, motor good, the skates, they'll be sufficient. Uh, the problem is that there's too much torque going through these cables here in this system. Uh, so really, this needs to be one-to-one -one uh, not reduction but just to split the power down to two drive shafts and the reduction has to happen at the skates because these um, these cables like high RPMs but low uh, torque. I was planning on just putting it on the shelf and um, <laughs> I've had enough of it but I had a burst of inspiration and I think I can figure out how to make this thing go so I'll have one more go at it uh, to get it going it'd be pretty cool if I can um, well I can't skate. It'd be pretty cool if I could attempt to ride it. And maybe I can find someone who can skate to give it a go. But that's going to have to wait for another week. So um, thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.